Okay, I'm just going to provide a, some quick feedback um, for a tool that I added to MarkEdit. So uh, over the weekend, Friday, uh, I guess it was, if I remember right, Friday, um, uh, LC had announced that they had worked with index data and they had released a first version of a bib frame to mark tool. Uh, I'm not sure how, many, sure how many people this impacts other than probably LC, um, but uh, the uh, Essentially, the um, work that they did uh, with index data, I believe, was to um, essentially create a way to generate XSLT files um, that could be used to translate a work uh, a file that has a work in an instance into um, a mark record. Um, you could find the stuff here on their GitHub instance. Essentially, they have a rules file, a bunch of data. You have to build your own to build it. They have all the instructions here as well as the um, the known issues and limitations and the primary limitation being that again the tool assumes uh, 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 the the translation is built for one work um, one instance um, and from that it'll generate a, uh, a mark record so um, I went ahead and took a look to see how difficult it would be to uh, uh, integrate that into mark edit um, so as folks may um, may or may not realize, so MarkEdit has a section called Mark Next, this BibFrame testbed. Uh, this has um, both the uh, BibFrame 1, BibFrame 2 um, uh, profiles, depending on what you're using. Uh, profile 2 um, stays up to date with the uh, current GitHub instance um, XSLT. There's a couple small changes that I make to the um, XSLTs to work within MarkEdit. Um, because MarkEdit compiles the XSLTs uh, for purposes of speed, but um, essentially the, the BibFrame testbed has been a way to be able to take Mark records and generate um, BibFrame records from them. Uh, the primary thing that um, you need to work with is you know, having a base URL and that kind of stuff. So uh, different serialization. So the uh, BibFrame tool that's been created um, works only on um, RDF, XML, uh, serialization um, per the documentation. Uh, so you'll see that in the BibFrame tool, I've added a convert uh, BibFrame to mark. This will bounce you out to the mark tools area where there's now an option here for BibFrame RDF to mark. Um, what is it using? Well, the tool uh, makes use of um, the uh, uh, BibFrame uh, to mark XSLT. Uh, so I went ahead and downloaded the files and built them so I could make sure that they would work within MarkEdit. Um, and so they do now. Um, so we can, if you don't have uh, a BibFrame file, you can go to the Library of Congress's tools. You can enter in an LCCN and get a comparison between the bib frame and the mark. You can copy the bib frame tool, bib frame representation. Um, that's what I've done. I have uh, two bib frame files that I'm gonna take a look at here. Uh, the first one is single records, the one I just downloaded um, from the tool there. Um, so here's one. Uh, the other bib frame record, uh, the bib frame records that I have um, is this one here. This is six records um, that are generated through the uh, BibFrame testbed. Um, essentially, it is a um, combination of works and instances paired together um, where the RDF about key um, links the uh, individual work instance together. Um, so the BibFrame uh, to mark tool uh, XSLT won't support this, um, but uh, in mark edits, uh, structure. Um, obviously, we work with um, large sets of data, so I was interested in ways to be able to um, use the, uh, the XSLT that was generated um, with the limitations and apply them to um, Mark Edit uh, and the Mark Edit um, tooling uh, to see if I could um, easily uh, plug it in so that it could work with um, uh, files that include multiple uh, work instance pairs. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works and I'll explain how it works. So 
Uh, we'll go ahead and grab the first record. So essentially, um, frame the RDF. Um, the way that this works actually, so it uses that XSLT, the X is their XSLT that it's using, um, regardless of what options you have turned on, whether it's used the native option, the tool will use the um, uh, Mark XML XSLT as part of the process. That's part of Mark Edit. So um, if you played with this file, know that that's going, or change the location of this file, know that that will potentially impact um, the uh, transformation. So we'll go ahead and do one. So we'll grab the first record, a uh, single record, and we'll go ahead and generate a single record and execute it. So the tool grabs the uh, file, transforms it. Um, it does essentially two transformations. The first one is the bib frame transformation to mark XML, mark XML to, uh, to mark. Um, so now I have a mark, X, a mark record. And we can go ahead and take a look at that. So this is the single record um, that was generated from uh, the data set that uh, I had pulled from this record here. So it was the mark record generated from this RDF data set. So we get the, the record here. So that's one. Uh, the next record, uh, like I said, um, is the uh, uh, multiple works. So we have work instance, work instance, work instance, work instance, work instance. So we have um, multiple work instance pairs. So one of the things that I did early on in uh, Mark Edit is integrate a linked data framework. Uh, this is primarily for building um, linked data um, URIs uh, as part of a reconciliation process. But in addition to doing that, that's allowed uh, me to think about how Mark Edit interacts with um, Sparkle data as well as other um, data that's more graph based. It's also allowed me to build tools around um, uh, resources that uh, would um, be able to take advantage of um, more of that graphing structure. Uh, so, for example, the, the tooling that builds, uh, that suggests the subject headings for MARC records, um, that pulls data from a variety of sources, uses that kind of structure underneath. Uh, so, essentially, I wanted to see if I could do the same thing um, with the um, XSLT that was provided. Um, and see if I could take um, a record set that has multiple work instances that may be um, that are paired, but may be spread throughout the file. So not in um, chronological in in um, chronological order, um, and see if the tool could um, pull those together and then use the XSLT to process the data. And it can. Um, so the linked data framework, the way that the tool works is it takes the um, RDF data, feeds it into the linked data framework, which generates a graph um, that creates um, uh, relationships between um, a work and instance. And once a relationship is established, then that data is pulled out of the uh, graph and fed through um, mark edit stream, uh, streaming functions. And those streaming functions then process um, the data through uh, the bib frame to mark XSLT and outputs the uh, generated mark record. From the user's perspective, you don't have to see any of that or know that any of that is happening. Um, granted, it does mean that the tool takes a little longer to run because generating the graph takes some time um, in real time, <coughs> as well as then traversing it and pulling together the relationships, but we'll go ahead and grab that multiple works file. And we'll generate a multiple works file and process it. And we can see that the tool goes ahead and completes the, uh, the process of generating um, the six records in a second. There, so 17 seconds. Like I said, takes a little bit longer. Um, 
unfortunately. Uh, it's one of those things that I'll have to see if there's a way to speed up. Uh, partly because the streaming functions in the background are creating um, memory mapped files that create temporary files in the background and whatnot. So there's obviously some work going on in the background, um, but we can go back and look at um, the files that are generated, uh, multiple works. And so these are the mark records generated from um, the data that was uh, turned into the bib frame record. So again, the tool is able to um, match the individual work um, and instances together uh, based on the information that's pulled into the linked data framework. So the tool is able to make use of that. And like I said, uh, part of the process now is going to be looking to see um, how can I speed that process up um, to uh, make it work faster? Um, I'm assuming that that should be possible because um, I've been able to optimize other parts of the link data framework. So um, that's essentially how it works. Um, as the bib frame to mark tool changes, this like with the mark to bib frame XSLTs, I will, um, I have the, um, I'm watching the Git repository, and as I see a change, I will um, go ahead and uh, pull the the files down and rebuild the XSLT um, and feed it back into um, Mark Edit on updates. But that's how that works for folks that are that are interested. So if you're doing um, if you have an inst if you're doing any work where you have BibFrame data, it is possible. Um, in Mark Edit to facilitate the transformation um, back to Mark. And in theory, um, you can do it over a file set of very large sizes with um, uh, with um, the uh, uh, instance of uh, work and instance pairs. Um, it just, again, takes a little bit of time. Um, I was testing last night uh, with record sets of um, uh, a couple thousand and it was taking about 15 to 20 minutes to process those records. So, I mean, it takes some time, um, but uh, I expect that will improve as, um, as I play around with it a little bit. So if you have questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, give it a shot if you're interested in that kind of thing and uh, see how it works.